Hi, another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got a very special guest. Really looking forward to this conversation. We got Tanae White with us. Clap it up for taking the time out to join us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. So yeah, so let's jump into it. Tell me about like your background, because I know you was a college athlete, mental health advocate, model, entrepreneur, such like a jack of all trades. So tell the word about you and like who you are and how you got into, you know, all these things. Yeah, it's a wonder that I'm actually here right now because my bucket is just overflowing. <laughs> um, but I guess to compress it down so I'm not talking your ear off all day. Um, I basically started my life as like what you would expect parents to want their kid to be. You know, they want you to do good in school, do sports, excel, go to college, get a good job, work your way up the corporate ladder, start a family, you know, that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I was halfway through there. Um, I graduated from college and then I ended up getting into Georgetown University for the master's program. So I did that as well. And while I was in that program, I worked for the U.S. Veterans Affairs. And then later on, I would go on to work for one of the largest aerospace agencies in the world. Um, and my background is in communications, corporate communications and economics. So uh, it was sort of like a blend of all my passions together. And I do come from a military family. So it just made sense. Um, but one random scroll on Instagram one night I saw that Sports Illustrated swimsuit was having a casting call mm -hmm. where it could be for any girl. You didn't have to be a model or anything. And I was not a model. I would do it for fun occasionally, but I didn't take it seriously by any means. And so I was like, why not? So I applied, I submitted a video and lo and behold, they accepted me and they're like, you made it to the next round. Mm -hmm. So I flew down to Miami um, and out of about 10,000 girls that year, I made it into the top 16. Wow. So I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know, long story short, I'm a big, you're a big deal. So. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> and while that year I didn't make it into the magazine just by like a hair, I tried out again. And the next year I won. Nice. And so that's really what changed the trajectory tra trajectory of me working in corporate America to becoming a full time model. Mm -hmm. um, obviously COVID hit the year that I won. So like it sort of threw everything off. I mm -hmm. had quit my job to model full time and like the world is closed. So it just, it, there was a lot of challenges, but I'm here today. I just moved to New York six months ago. Like mm -hmm. I'm doing the thing. And I still also dabble in my corporate background as well. Um, I work for a startup, a real estate startup here mm -hmm. in the city. It's a tech powered startup, which I love. Um, and then I also have my own small business where mm -hmm. I provide um, marketing services to small businesses um, who are in need of either help or a revamp or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, on top of being a model and going to photo shoots and traveling and all that stuff. So it's been quite a crazy ride these last couple of years. Yeah, multiple bags going <laughs> all over the place. So I can imagine like, you know, between all that, it could be stressful at times and things of that nature. So what made you want to become a mental health advocate? Um, that's a great question. For me, uh, mental health and mental wellness are really close to my heart because as a teenager, I suffered from depression. Um, and then also when I was 15 years old, I lost a good friend of mine um, who was also around my age to suicide. Um, and so in college, I had actually started an advice column. It was called Brazen Backbone. And it was basically to help uplift teenagers who were going through similar feelings I had felt growing up and just to sort of remind them that there is light, that you're not alone and things like that. And while I don't keep that page active anymore, I sort of transformed that effort into what I now call Feel Good Fridays, mm -hmm. where basically I like to <laughs> I like to encourage people to dance it out if you're feeling bad. If you have a bad week or you didn't think you were going to get through this week, it was so tough. Just like live in the moment and just dance because dancing is one way you can get back to yourself, back to your body, and it gets your endorphins running, which you need if you're feeling sad. Right. Um, so I'm hoping that one day maybe that can be another business <laughs> that I add to my belt. Um, but I just love the fact that it sort of combines my passions with also my silly side because you, you don't have to be a good dancer. You right. just got to 
<laughs> just I'm not a little bit. either, but I got my two step, but you know, outside of that. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. So what made what made you want to choose that charity for us to partner with on this episode and how you became involved in it? Yeah, so um I really love the foundation because they truly are one of the most pivotal pivotal structures in mental wellness. Um, you think of mental wellness, that foundation is the first one that you think of. Mm -hmm. um, for years, I've followed them and I've watched them grow so big. They actually have walks where you can walk for a cause, sort yes. of like the breast cancer for awareness cause where you walk and raise funds, similar mm -hmm. for mental wellness. Um, and unfortunately, the year that I really wanted to like join and get into it, the yeah. pandemic happened. Um, but I still really um, interact with them closely. And I hope that this year I can actually partner with them on a more intimate level and really um, uplift the, the world of mental wellness. Um, and especially given the fact that I am a depression survivor or fighter um, and I've lost one friend, but also know of so many people who have lost those to suicide or similar. Yeah. Um, it's just always been a cause that's been really, really close to my heart. Absolutely. It makes so much sense, too. And I'm glad that, you know, we're having this conversation about it since it's such like an important topic today with mental health. And especially you think about COVID and, you know, isolation and quarantine, things like that. And you're by yourself. Things start running through your mind and, th and things of that nature. So, yeah, you exactly. know, the, the foundations for definitely highlighting those things and helping people, you know, cope through their problems. So they don't take that step in, you know, suicide. So and thank you to you as well for, you know, putting that message forward too. Thank you. <laughs> so to backtrack a little bit, I want to touch on the modeling real quick. So when did you know like modeling was the thing for you? Was it like during the SI swim event or, you know, I know you mentioned you dabbled in it like every now and then, so. Yeah, so I have to admit, I wanted to be a model when I was a child. Like I remember in first grade, we had to like write our dream board. And I was like, I want to be a model. So, <laughs> funny thing about parents though. <laughs> the funny thing about parents yeah. though, is when you bring that paper home, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, that doesn't make you money. That's not stable. You can't All about the money. get a job with that. Yeah. So that's how I got into like the career that I had. Mm -hmm. um, but in the back of my head, it was always a thing that I loved. I just didn't really know how to do it or how to get started. Um, I had at one point a lifestyle blog on tanaywhite.com. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I'm still to this day into fashion. Like I always had my hands in some form of fashion. But when it came to modeling, the closest thing I would do would be like, go into, you know, inner city DC and like, stand up my tripod and take photos of myself it was never anything like on a sports illustrated level or a victoria's secret level um so to think that in literally just three years of modeling and mind you i started late i started when i was 26 i'm 29 now so the fact that i can say i worked for sports illustrated i've been featured by victoria's secret i just had a campaign come out with herve leger mm -hmm. like i'm doing incredible stuff that most girls it takes them decades to get to you know so i'm just so thankful i'm just so thankful <laughs> yeah and you and you put in the work too so i don't want that to go under the radar because you also got to put in the work for what you want so it doesn't just like you know land on your lap so exactly i think a lot of people think they have this misconception that if you look pretty and mm -hmm. you know you have the right agency you're just going to take off you're going to be famous you're going to be rich like you'll never have to worry about a thing in your life and I don't think people really understand that there's so many complexities that fall behind the surface. You know, it, it's a mental risk. It's a mental toll. It's not just about looking good all the time. It's about like in here as well, you get rejected all the time. You go to castings, they take one look at you and say next, like it, it's hard. You really have to be tougher. You really have to, like you said, put in the work to like not feel defeated when people say, hey, you're... thanks, but no thanks, you know, right. so. <laughs> you have that thick skin, because, you know, you might get a hundred no's, could be that, it could be that one yes, and that really transformed your career, and, you know. I just need that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you have, like, look, well, 
what's the most exciting thing for you in 2022 happening? Ooh, well, um, the next issue of Sports Illustrated is mm -hmm. coming out. While I don't know yet if I will be in the magazine because they shoot for like a good portion of the year, I'm yeah. excited to come back or the, the possibility of coming back. Um, also, given, you know, the pandemic and things that have happened, I'm just really ready to have this year push in my career. Like I'm ready for more jobs, more work. I know we've been tiptoeing and even now as we speak, like we're still going through some spikes and stuff like that. But I think that uh, us as a community and as a society, we're getting the hang of it. And so uh, I know for a lot of models, a lot of dancers, um, one of my best friends, she's a musician. We've all been significantly hurt by this pandemic. Yes. And I think that 2022 is the year that we all hope for everything we've worked so hard for over the last couple of years to finally come to fruition. So I'm just speaking good positivity into the universe. That's the way to do it. I hope so too. Because, you know, the last two years has been like tough for everybody. So I think now's the time for things to you know, look up again and things to slowly, you know, get back to normal and get more bookings for everybody and, you know, more hopefully in-person interviews and things of that nature. So all of that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But that's a wrap for our conversation. You know, again, thank you so much for taking the time out and we'll definitely handle things on the back end and make a nice donation to the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention on your behalf. So and I'm sure they'll love that and, you know, show you all types of love. So I love that. Thank you so much. That means so much. Cool. And yeah, before we wrap, I'll let you have the last word. You want to shout some anybody out, things like that, <laughs> and then we could close it up. Yeah, uh, I guess shout out to my parents. Wouldn't be there without, be here without them. <laughs> uh, shout out to all my friends too, because they definitely helped me keep a level head during the pandemic. Yeah. And then I guess a word of wisdom to anyone who's thinking of taking a risk and following their dreams. Mm -hmm. Do it, work hard. Um, and stay true to yourself and always be nice to people around you. Absolutely. Sound the right. But again, thank you so much, Tanae, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. <laughs> this was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>